Hello, my viewers. Many of you probably remember the video that I made about the Sure Start Soft Start kit uh, by Hyper Engineering. I have a little clip here to show you that shows a compressor starting without a Sure Start Soft Start kit and also when it starts with the soft start kit. That was good. Now I want to read to you some of the questions that have come across to me in my email uh, and see what maybe what you think. Maybe you can give a different answer than what I did or who knows. Uh, here's one. It says, Hi Jim, I wanted to ask you about the condensing fan motor on a heat pump. Does the condensing fan by any chance reverse when going from heat mode to cooling mode? Well, the answer to that is no, not typically. Um, if it does go in reverse, then the chances are it's going to be going in reverse all the time. And if the motor is going in reverse, it could be uh, a bad run capacitor. Uh, that's one thing right there. So it is a good idea to check the direction of your fan motors periodically because you never can tell if the run capacitor has gone bad. It will go through. Okay. Well, let's see. Here's another email that I recently got. Uh, one or more of your videos have been stolen. Many of us HVAC technicians out there that make videos have been having a little problem where people are stealing our videos. Now we don't mind it if you feature our videos. That way we still get credit for it. So that's not a problem. But when you blatantly steal the video and you post it as an upload it on your channel claiming it to be yours that's called a copyright infringement and that don't go well with me never did before and probably never will so we have to do something about that okay what is your experience with R420A um, I've never used it and by the way, R420A is a drop-in replacement for R12. It is not a drop-in replacement for R134A because R134A pretty much stands alone. Uh, and if you do have a, an old system that had R12 in it, it's not a good idea just to put 134 in because what will happen then is you're not going to get the right pressures and it's not going to cool your uh, refrigerator or freezer, whatever it may be, very well. Um, and uh, so you really, uh, but now however though, R420A is meant to be a drop-in replacement for R12. Okay, uh, here's another one. Uh, can you explain how limit switches work and have their own individual job, like roll-out switches, auxiliary limit switches, high limit switch and fan limit switch. They all, for the most part, do the same thing, but in, for different reasons and in a different way. To give you an example, a high limit switch uh, usually is going to be closed when uh, the temperature of the space where the sensor happens to be is, is cool enough under the temperature that it's uh, set for. And if the uh, temperature goes up uh, higher than the limit of that switch, then of course it's supposed to shut down, or actually the switch is going to open, okay, which should shut down the, uh, for example, a, uh, uh, electric heat strips or and any, whatever it may be, usually electric heat strips with high limit switches. 
A fan limit switch is going to do a similar thing where it's going to close when the uh, temperature of the liquid line gets up to a certain temperatures so that the fan, the condensing fan will come on. And let's see here, let's try another uh, email. Uh, here we go. Uh, uh, Dr. Zarkloff, uh, I would like to know if you can recommend a good troubleshooting book for residential heat and air. Uh, no. Uh, I really don't think that a good troubleshooting book that would cover every single different kind of manufacturer's air conditioning system exists. Each manufacturer has its own technical manuals on uh, every single different piece of equipment that they make. I don't really believe that it would be very likely anybody would undertake such a, a task to actually write a, a book that would cover every single air conditioner out there. And, and because, and it, well, for one, uh, it wouldn't really be helpful very long because Everything's changing in the HVAC industry just every single day. New pieces of equipment coming out, so how would you update a book like that? Okay, um, one person would like to know what is the perfect running pressures of a system that's running R22? Well, I mean, it depends on different things. You can't really say, uh, for example, uh, you can't say, oh, uh, 65 on the low side and 220 on the high side. That's just not always there. I mean, perhaps maybe if, if the temperature outside is, say, uh, 80 degrees or something, but, you know, it's not always 80 degrees outside. It's going to be something else. Uh, I mean, it could be 90 degrees, it could be 100 degrees. That means your pressures are going to be up on both sides. So you really need to charge a unit by subcooling or superheat, depending on the type of metering system you have. Or weigh in package units for that matter. Okay, here's one. Do you have any videos that will show me how to hook up a relay with a bad circuit board on a heat strip? Well, first of all, I'm not too sure why you'd want to hook up a relay to a bad circuit board. But, I mean, I'm not too sure about the question, but what I would do first of all is I would replace the, the circuit board and probably the relay as well because you don't really know what made that circuit board go bad. It's very possible that the coil on the contactor or relay may have over amp due to uh, just it getting old and wore out or going somehow getting to ground or something um, and made the micro relay or triac on the circuit board go bad in the first place. So thank you very much and I Appreciate you listening and I look forward to your comments.